Hi, I'm Lee Gatiss and this is Lee on the Lectionary and we're looking this week uh, at the readings for the second Sunday before Advent, which are Malachi chapter 4 verses 1 and 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 6 to 13 and Luke 21 verses 5 to 19. Central to all three passages this week is the coming divisive judgment of God and our response to it. Malachi's prophecy aims to convince its readers that God's covenant with his people still stands. Part of his promise is an assurance that one day evil will be destroyed and all evildoers punished. Malachi 4 warns that the day is approaching and it will burn up arrogance and it will purge the world, root and branch. However, in the midst of such terrifying judgment, there is hope. Those who revere God's name, that is, hear his word and respond with faith and generous hearts, will not face the doom of judgment. Rather, they will see the light as the sun of righteousness rises with healing in its wings upon them, the dawning of a new day. The healing in the sun's wings will heal their backsliding and the remnants of sin within, which have loaded them down with the burden of Adam's fallen race. With these chains removed, they can leap like calves released from the stall and let rip with praise to God in new and transformed lives. 2 Thessalonians began with a warning of impending judgment, which is not lifted throughout the epistle. At the end, these warnings against idleness must therefore be taken in that context of an approaching day when all must give an account. The apostles' own example of diligence and hard work is held up as something for us all to imitate. If anyone does not work, he shall not eat, he says. Not that this precludes us from helping the poor and the vulnerable, and children, of course, which Paul is very clear about elsewhere. But the Christian community is not to be characterised by idleness and full of busybodies who have nothing to do but gossip and benefit from the labour of others. More than just making a contribution to the economy, however, we are to be eager to do what is right and not grow weary in such effort. The second coming is not to make us slack and nonchalant, in other words, but to spur us on. And so we are um, to continue doing hard work for the rest of our lives. And those who are seriously lazy can have no real hope and belief in that coming day, therefore. And so we should not have fellowship with them, lest such lackadaisical attitudes rub off on us also. As well as continuing to work hard and to earn our keep, Jesus urges us to watchfulness as we wait for the coming of the, the new kingdom, the heavenly kingdom, as he comes in glory. He speaks of a day which came but only 40 years after his resurrection when the temple in Jerusalem would be destroyed. The disciples ask him for a sign so that they all know when this is coming. And what he says is, various things must happen first. False messiahs, wars, insurrections, earthquakes, famines, plagues. But worse than that, persecution of believers too. Yet the word of God will be taken at the same time to kings and to governors who will hear the glorious gospel proclaimed. All these things, of course, did happen before 70 AD as the apostles spread out across the known world and testified to who Christ was and what he had done. But Jesus also described a pattern, which has repeated ever since, of regular upheavals on the earth and in the world of humanity, where believers are persecuted, but the gospel goes forth anyway. The end will one day come, but we are not to be terrified by the repeated difficulties that we face. Instead, 
the Lord commends endurance and promises his protection. One day he will receive us, body and soul, into his new creation.